Welcome back to the channel. Like I've always said, 50,000 subscribers is the goal here. If you haven't hit that button, it would certainly be appreciated. Boeing has had a turbulent last five years. Many argue that those turbulent times had been slowly improving until the top of this year when everything once more plummeted and did not favour the plane maker whatsoever. However, despite the internal struggles and also customer and suppliers expressing their frustrations, Boeing still needs to continue moving towards the future, with critical decisions to be made in the coming years to help dictate what will be next. If they don't look to the future, they'll fall behind even further. But what is next for Boeing in the realm of new aircraft, especially considering several aircraft types are yet to be certified? Well, that's actually where I think it's essential to begin. And while funny to consider when discussing new aircraft for Boeing, it's sometimes hard to imagine that there are, technically speaking, many new planes to come. Yes, they've been announced, so they're not, say, brand new, but they include the likes of the 777X, Boeing's next widebody, which they hope will take the industry by storm. Then you've got two remaining 737 MAX variants. So it is hard to believe, again, that through everything that's occurred, we still have two variants of the MAX family that are yet to be certified, and primarily focusing on the 737-10, it's viewed as a game changer for many airlines. But as for when essentially a lot of these aircraft enter service, well, that remains entirely unclear, with no timeline. But look, it's something I wanted to mention. As aviation enthusiasts, we often discuss, speculate, and have a lot of fun taking a look at just what's next for a plane maker with revolutionary new tech, and sometimes it's easy to forget that we're still awaiting new planes from Boeing, getting that certification from the FAA. So what after, and what is Boeing doing? One of arguably the most important things to consider is that of the NMA, dubbed the 797, that was never released. This proposed aircraft would have been a clean sheet, and initially come into two variants, NMA-6 and NMA-7, seating 228 and 267 in a two-class configuration respectively. There was a lot of appeal for such a plane that many would have said finally would replace the 757 to a certain extent. Some airlines believed it would have been crazy for Boeing to not launch such a plane at the time. Meanwhile, leading aircraft lessers were screaming out for a plane of the NMA's capabilities from the American American plane maker. They believed it would be game-changing for their customers and provide added competition to that Airbus rivalry. You may even recall Delta, a long-time customer of Boeing and one of the airlines that continues to fly the 757, requesting such a plane, saying they'd commit in sheer numbers, likely well over a base three-digit sum. But for several reasons, Boeing never proceeded with such an aircraft, and thus has left the market very open for the European plane maker of Airbus to pitch their middle-of-the-market offerings to customers uncontested. What the NMA did allow us to understand is the direction Boeing was looking to head at the time when it comes to their new plane. But now, with no NMA coming, at least not until the 2030s, what is currently being studied, and does it correlate to a future plane? That's where Boeing's truss-braced wing study comes into the fray. What many people are led to believe has a lot of potential, if successful, in the testing phase to play a crucial part in the overall study and long-term development of their next plane. The TTBW, for short, has an essential goal, to enable more efficient travel through wings that are not as chunky, basically, as current offerings. Look at gliders, which many people will compare when studying the TTBW. Now, it would be very hard to have wings like that of gliders on commercial airliners. Why? Well, in simple terms, think of the payload and overall sheer size of the fuselage. If you're adopting glider wings, it just won't work. But can a plane maker adopt a very similar initiative and have it work on a commercial airliner. Yes, and Boeing and NASA are running a study that essentially will see support structures, or should I say a brace, for these wings. And through a study, they believe they will have something to work on and build upon, but that will all be results permitting. By 2028 at least, the hope is a full-scale demonstrator of this will fly. It has already been officially designated the X-66A, while it has made the rounds for the past 
last few years as the project has developed. It's really important to understand that this has been in development since the 2010s and is only now really gaining pace, and obviously as we approach closer to a demonstrator flying, well no doubt it will pick up. This demonstrator will use a MD-90 as the body, that doesn't mean that's what the end aircraft will look like if they move ahead with it, but it will be absolutely crucial to use this as a base for running tests to determine if opportunities are present, where they can see improvements and such. What's next after this? Well, through getting the demonstrator in the air successfully, hopefully there will still be more to study, but by the time the 2030s roll around, the American plane maker will have considered its next move in the industry. Frankly, it'll have to have considered it. With a massive view of sustainable travel and making the next aircraft as efficient as possible, Boeing will want to move towards a more revolutionary design. This is what they'll see as the way forward, and many people would argue would push them back into their days of innovation, maybe something not seen now for several decades. Arguably as well, you'd be hard-pressed to find someone that would believe the next single-aisle aircraft to replace the 737 MAX, or even say a replacement to the 757, would not be a clean sheet. Frankly, re-engining the 737 MAX once more probably can't work. People would argue that Boeing pushed the absolute limitations to the 737NG body to result in the 737 MAX, that by the time the 2030s come around, they just need to have something new and fresh. Factors such as the end size of the aircraft are all something that needs to be factored in, especially if they are going to look at adopting, say, those glider wings with the brace. They need to fit into airports and a lot more needs to be considered. You can have the best aircraft in the world for customers, but if it can't fit into existing gates at the airport, especially in relation to its size, there will be question marks. Let's say Boeing proceeded with a TTBW and it was the size of maybe the 757. Well, you're hardly going to slot it into a 777 gate just because it's large. You want it to fit in an adequate space at an airport without having to make drastic changes. Drastic changes not only take up time, but also mean a lot of resources, including money, have to be put forward, and this could be a deterrence to some customers. We saw this take place with the A380, as that was a challenge fitting it into airports, and thus became even less attractive. For the 777X, Boeing adopted the folding wingtip technology, which means it can have a larger wingspan when in the air, and therefore being more efficient, but when it gets on the ground, those wingtips will fold up. I'd argue that the next 5-10 to 10 years are going to be utterly fascinating to really understand Boeing's movements in the industry, what will come of the X-66A, that being the TTBW, and what's next for so many uncertified planes. I think for Boeing, while yes they are experiencing troubles internally, their main goal will be getting these existing planes finally certified and then moving forward in a positive manner. You can let me know your thoughts on the aircraft manufacturer and how you see the next 5-10 to 10 years panning out for its future aircraft. Thanks a lot for watching, take care, do be safe, and I will indeed see you next time. And we'll fly.